bad this time. We got smart out here on the game. So this is an absolute extreme of right. It wants you to find the absolute max and min on this D domain. 0, 2, 0, minus 2, minus 2, 0. All right, so, uh, so what did you do? This is, again, the most absolute extreme of you do? Take the partials. Partials. So the first thing you did was take the uh, V sub X Get the point one zero, which would be so. This is a, this is a critical point, isn't it? It's the only critical point in the interior of the domain. Did you get that? All right. What did you do now? Find equations for each individual line. Uh, all right. Well, uh, uh, all right, Let, let's get something out of the way, though. Uh, this, this is, uh, if x is 1 and, and y is 0, what is z? x is 1 and y is 0. Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, so, so this point right here is 1, 0, minus 1. All right, this would be 2, 0, what? 0. Yeah. This would be zero two what? Zero two four. And this is zero minus two four. four. All right. So so far, what's the absolute max? Four. And this would be the absolute min. But we need to check the three curves. This this and that yes all right so so uh, the first curve let's say this is c1 c2 c3 so c1 what do you how are you going to check that to see if there's any extreme on that curve x equals zero x equals zero so that would yield z equals y squared minus y zero squared z equals y squared. So what does that tell you about the extrema on this curve here? Z equals y squared. That it would never be lower than negative 1. When y is 0, the smallest this could possibly be is 0, right? Mm -hmm. And the biggest that could possibly be is 4. four. four. So we didn't get any new information from that, did we? Now let's look at C2. What is that curve? Y equals X. No. Then Y equals negative X. No. Okay. Y equals. Y, uh, y minus 1? Because 
minus x, 2 minus x, right? Right, this was, again, this was x, and y equals 2 minus x. So now what are you going to do? And this, of course, let's just get that out of the way. This was x equals 0. This was y equals 2 minus x. And this is clearly y equals what? Right. Uh, no, x minus 2, isn't it? So you need to, um, now, as it turns out, because y is squared, does it matter which one of these we put in here? No. So we really, so for C3, it doesn't really make any difference. Whatever is going to be the extrema here will be the same extrema there because of the nature of this. So you're only going to get z equals x squared plus y squared minus 2x. Did you do this? Then, then, then did you uh, distribute everything out? And so we're going to get 2x squared. And then in the middle term is going to be at minus 4x, and then this will be minus 6x, and then plus 4, isn't it? Did you get that? Well, and then did you take the derivative of that? And set it equal to 0, and you got x equals... Uh, six fourths. So that would be about right there and right there. Wouldn't it? Now you've got uh, three halves, one half something, and of course here's the point: three halves, what minus a half, and something. Same thing, right? So uh, all you have to do is now figure out what this number is in, uh, for z. Did you do that? No. that's the Well, you need, to, you need to plug this x and this y back into z and see what z is. See if it's bigger than 4 or less than uh, 0 to see if it changes anything. So uh, if you do that, you get... Uh, like it's minus half so that would these points would be your uh, absolute min wouldn't they no is it still the middle one is it one. Be minus one right? yeah oh i'm sorry uh, i did i forgot about this one yes yeah, th this is therefore the absolute min and these are the absolute maxes because this did not uh, yeah i did look i forgot about that uh, so that is those are the relative min right they, they, are, uh, they are relative uh, mins, yes, on, on this uh, curve. But remember, the z is a surface, so this surface dips down here at the lowest point, but then it also dips like this, but not this low. But it di dips like that, as you can see, because it goes from 4 and then down to minus half and then back up to 0. And it does the same thing here, but this dips even lower inside the domain, so that would be the absolute min and absolute max would be these two points. All right, is that everything okay with that? Why did you take the derivative of z? Because once we had the curve y equals 2 minus x, we plug that back into this. And then and effectively now we just have a curve on the zx plane. You see, now you find in the absolute min of that curve in the zx plane only. Let's look at some of these problems here. Uh, let's see, look at number one here. It says, uh, find the, both one and two are the same problem. Uh, equations of tangent planes. So uh, look at number one, it just says z equals log this at this point. So it just wants the equation of the tangent plane to the surface. This is a surface. There's a point on the surface. Get that. And it wants to 
across the equation of the tangent plane. So it's some kind of a surface, whatever it is, at a certain point, there is a tangent plane P, and it just wants this equation of this, of this thing at this point. So how do you do that? What do you, now again, I, I say this, you, you should start with the general principle always. Write down a general principle first. What would you write? Well, what is the general principle? How do, what is a tangent plane? What's the equation of a tangent plane? Z1, Z0, equal, equal to... Uh, give, me, give me the vector form. Let's start with the vector oh, form. It, um, X minus X naught squared, or you want the A in front of the... No, the, no, the vector form of, of a plane. What is the vector form of the equation of a plane? vector form. Well, point normal form. Yeah. Not the point normal form, it's just the vector form. Is it the normal vector value of the point? Not the point, but the, the line on the plane. The length, the distance, vector, the point of the vector of the point, right? The distance of the point. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, there's no distance involved. If, 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 I, if I give you a plane, and I have a normal vector, and a vector in the plane, then what is, the, let's call it R, so then what is the, what is the uh, equation of a plane? There you go, that's what we wanna start with. N dot R equals zero. Okay, but now, that's the equation of a plane, but now I want the equation of this plane to this surface, so now what would be, what should you write? What, what is N? How do you get N always? Yes, well, so what should you write here? Not del Z, but F, F of X, F. del generally F. Yeah. Now what do I mean by this F? What's F? F generally is this, right? Some f of x, y, z equals constant, and del f is always a normal vector, is it not? Mm -hmm. So now we've written down the general principle to this problem. It wants the equation of a tangent plane. I know every plane is this. I know n is that. Now we can get started. So now write down what del f. Two x over x squared y squared. Okay, uh, you probably be a good idea to rewrite this. Uh, get it like this. So if we rewrite it like that, we can do it in two ways. It doesn't make any difference though. We could have log of x squared plus y squared. What? Minus z. Minus z equals zero. Okay. So now we have it in this form. So now what is? Uh, so what should I write here? Del f is now what? First one is two x over x squared plus y squared. Yes. But what, you know, you say the first one. You mean what you the, mean by the that? The x component. The first yeah. good component. Good. Two x over x squared plus y squared. Okay. And y is components two y over x squared plus y squared. Yes. Yes. And then. Oh, the z component. Zero. Uh, Negative one. Negative one. Excuse me. <clears throat> if we write it this way. Okay. Uh, and now uh, we, re we really want this where? We want this evaluated. Negative one. 